This YouTube channel is all about the Motley Muse art. I create art and I teach you how to create your own. Please subscribe. Here are the supplies that I'll be using. A stretched canvas over a wood frame. This is my preferred type of canvas, but if you have paper or a board or a piece of wood, it's all good. It's the same method I'll be teaching you. Here is a paper plate. I like to put my paints on the paper plate so that way at the end of my painting, I don't have to clean any dishes or scrub any paint off of anything. So it's really good. I can throw it away. Very easy. The brushes that I like to use are a large, medium, and a small. Today's painting, I will be using a square large, a medium round, and a small filbert bright. The reason why this is called a filbert bright is because there are a lot of bristles that are tightly compacted together and they come to a rounded kind of squarish point. They're not square brushes and they're not rounded. They're just in the middle, like they've been shaved a little bit. I really prefer these ones a lot for doing fine details. If you don't have one, don't worry, it's okay. Just use a small little brush. The other things that I will be using are my pitchers of water. Now, I like to use pitchers because they have handles and a low center of gravity, which makes it really easy so that when I'm painting and if I accidentally like knock into it, the center of gravity is low down here, so it doesn't spill over as easily. I also like to have two different places to clean my water. I use this one for my dirty water and I use a smaller one for my clean water. This is so that way I can give my brush an extra rinse and make sure I get all of the paint out as best as I can. Another thing that I like using are paper towels. I use them a lot to clean my brushes and for spills. And of course I have an outfit on right now that I don't mind getting paint on. I will be using acrylic paint and acrylic paint does stain. It, it's like it's, it stains forever. So um, if you do have a mess, clean it up right away or otherwise it's going to stain if, when it, once it dries. Okay, so with your painting, you, know, you can do it horizontal, you can do it vertical. It's up to you and what wall you're going to put this on because some places that you decorate with the painting, it could look cool with a vertical or a horizontal. Today, for me, for the wall I'm putting it on, I'm going to do it vertical. Okay, so I'm going to get all my stuff set up nice and pretty. Got my little paper plate, get all my things together. And I want you to remember, this is a fun activity, okay? So I don't want you to be stressing out or freaking out about anything because you don't have to be. This is just a fun time that we're gonna be hanging out with each other. So relax and if you have a boo-boo, don't worry, that's okay. Just let the paint dry completely and then once the paint is dry, then go ahead and paint over it. But if, you have, if you're stressing out and you keep painting over and over again on the canvas and adding more paint to it, what's gonna happen is you're just going to get a very painty mess and you're just moving around paint and it's not going to stick and adhere to the canvas. So you're pretty much just wasting your time. So if you have a boo-boo, stop, take a break, let it dry completely. And once it's dry all the way, then come back and finish it and you'll have a much better result in fixing a boo-boo. It's always good to take breaks. Okay, so I'm putting the paint on my canvas here. I got some blue and some red. I'm going to make a little bit of pink. And the way that I'm making the pink is I'm adding white and red together. And when that's what that's going to do is change the value of the red, and it's going to make the red a little bit lighter, and it's going to turn into pink. Notice how... I'm having a hard time with my paint here towards the end of it. I always like to use all my paint. I don't like wasting paint at all. So use the end of it and make sure that you keep the lids closed because the paint dries really quickly. All right, so those are the only colors I need for right now. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and work with these colors for right now. The reason why I'm not putting out all the colors is because acrylic paint dries really super quickly. And I wanna be able to use these paints for a long time. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is, let's see, we can use any brush. Let's use our middle round. Now, I am going to start doing this with paint. Now, if you are nervous about what, what's going on, use a pencil first to get a basic outline. So everything I'm doing here is just a basic outline of where the ballerina is going to be. So if you're brave, go ahead and try it in paint or a pen. But I'm just going to go ahead now so it'll pick up on the camera and use paint. But if you're very nervous and it's been a while since you painted, go ahead and use a pencil first to do this part. Okay, so now we want to be brave and we're going to do the ballerina in sections. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to think to myself, okay, well, her body's going to be in the middle and her head and everything so I kind of want to visualize it now I see her body being here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and make a small smiley face it's going to come down to a V and I've made a triangle I'm going to cut put a base coat down with pink so this is going to be the bodice of her outfit this is her back now I'm going to come back in and I want to do her dress so her dress is gonna flare out in all sides, which is gonna be so much fun. Ooh, look at that go. I'm having a great time painting. Aren't you having fun? It's a lot of fun. It's gonna go back and forth, back and forth. I'm not paying close attention in the sense that I'm covering everything with pink. I'm just kind of trying to go back and forth with my brush to make lines and just to kind of cover. Make sure that your lines are straight and we don't have any crooked areas because if we do it with lines that are straight, it's going to make our dress look like there's a lot of starch in it and then it's really stiff and it sticks out and it's super tutu-y. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at that for right now. This is looking pretty good. Now that I have my skirt, I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe she could be a tad bit wider. If you want your ballerina to be a little bit wider, go ahead and fix it right now. But you know what, actually, I'm going, I always have second guesses all the time and I think I'm having a second guess. I'm gonna leave it right there. But if you want, after you do your dress, go ahead and fix your little triangle. Remember, we want a, a little smiley face right here because we wanna show the fabric of the dress is kind of coming down a little bit. So it's a triangle with a little smiley face and then flared out lines, like a peacock. All right. So that's coming along pretty good. I'm going to give that a minute to allow it to dry. While it's drying, I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush. Now the best way to clean a brush is take your paper towel and pull across the paper towel. See what I'm doing? And then turn. Now this is getting the bulk of our paint off of the brush. Once I have the bulk of the paint off, I'm going to go ahead and remember how we have the dirty water. I'm going to put my brush inside, mix it around. Now be careful that you're not squishing the brush all the way down to the bottom. We want the brush in the water, but we don't want to destroy the bristles. So then I'm going to come up here and I like to bend some of the water out. This is why I prefer pitchers because I have this little area where I can bend the bristles and the water can come out just ever so slightly. Now I want to take a secondary rinse and put it in my clean water. Remember not to squish the bristles too far into the bottom. Now they can bend ever so slightly on the bottom, but just very little. And then I'm going to let a little bit of the water by bending the bristles up here come out of the brush. Okay, 
So now I have a lot of water on my brush and I'm using acrylic paint and I don't want to have water in, um, in mixed in with my paint. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to go across and wipe and pull and turn, wipe and pull several times. Do not push, okay? Do not push, pull. We only want pulling motions on the paper towel. And I got all the water out. So now that the water's out, let's see. So I was thinking it would be a good moment in time to just block out the skin. Now we will come back and touch up the skin. I just want to block it out for right now so I know where I'm going. So I'm just going to add a little tiny dab of, of skin tone. Now she can be whatever skin tone you want her to be. I'm going to use a couple different shades of skin tone to really make her look 3D. So whichever tone you want to use, go ahead and use that color. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to envision where her shoulders and her arm is. I'm going to do a line up here. And then I'm without filling anything and I'm going to come down and follow the line of the shoulder to where her arm should be. And I'm going to come down. Now, the lower that the hand gets to down here, the closer and the skinnier it gets. So if you notice right here, look at what I'm doing. I've just created a triangle right here with her arm. See how it's really skinny right here and it's really kind of fat up here? That's good. That's going to really give a, it's going to look that like more of her arm is in front of the body when it's down here and less of her arm is in front of the body. So that's why we see more here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come down and I'm going to try to make it come to a nice pretty point in the bottom. There we go. Okay, so now once I have that, I'm going to fill in the top part. All right. Okay, once you have it filled in, go ahead and do the little edges to make it look rounded and nice and pretty and straight. We want those lines to be straight. And we want like a curve and we want both sides shoulders to be kind of the same if they're slightly different and one arm on the on one side is a little bit bigger than the other side that's okay because they're two different arms and we just see more of one than we see of the other one so that's okay but for the most part try to make them somewhat relatively the same just you know same person and you know you could too. I have seen, I saw a ballerina who had a prosthesis on her arm and it was really cool in that she was still dancing and loving life and doing things and it was really cool. So, I mean, go ahead and personalize it. Personalize your skin tone. If you would like the arms up and out like she's doing one of these motions, do that. Um, this way is a little bit easier to hide the hands. So if you're a little nervous about painting hands, this might be the way to go. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit of a neck. And I'm going to do a little triangle here for the chin and the face. Because she's looking off to the side. So I made a letter J right here. Okay, I'm going to do a little, oops. Let me turn on a light. It might help. There we go. How's that? I completely forgot to turn it on before I started filming. Sorry about that. But there we go. So here's a close up. See how I did her face? She's kind of turned. So I did the letter J and then the, her neck is just a line underneath of the J. All right. Okay, so now we're done with that. We'll let that dry for a minute. Let's wash our brushes again. Remember, we wipe it off first. Then we put the brush into the dirty water first. We bend the br bristles slightly. We put it back into the clean water. We bend the bristles slightly. And now we can know for sure that our brush is all the way clean. And we're testing it on our paper towel 
and rolling it to get that water off and none of the paint comes out of my brush. And so I know that this brush is super clean and ready to go for the next thing. All right, so we're gonna allow that area to dry for a little bit and let's go ahead and do the background. For the background, I am using my large square brush. Notice how it has a square edge. You can use a round if you want. The only difference will be instead of lines and edges, you're gonna have more of a rounded look with your brush strokes and that can be totally cute too. Okay, so I'm gonna take it and I'm just going to whoop all over the back, going back and forth, making X shapes. So I'm making X's all over the place, a bunch of X's. And I'm gonna continue making these X's the whole way around the back until I cover the back of the of the ballerina like that this it's almost like if there's a wall there or if she's on stage and it's just it fades into the background so go ahead and do X's all over be very careful when you get next to the edge I'm gonna do that at the end right now I'm just gonna have a fun time covering up all these areas and then once I've covered up a bunch of areas, then I'll go back and work close to the body. So don't stress out. The more brush strokes you make, the cooler this painting is gonna look. We wanna have lots of different brush strokes. The more you keep wiping over the paintbrush, the more they're gonna fade out, which can also be a really cool look, but it's, I don't know, it'll be more like art, art that's called realism where it looks more like a photo versus a painting, painting like impressionism. This style of painting that I'm teaching you is called impressionism. And it's basically the impression of what it looks like. On purpose, I am putting effort to try and not make this look like a photograph. I want this to look like it's been a painting and somebody painted it. That's why it's called impressionism, the impression of what it looks like, not what it really is if you were to like stare at it in real life. So yes, I guess it could look a little cartoony with impressionism, it could. Um, but I mean, look at what's happening right now with this background. Isn't it so pretty with all these little brush strokes and marks? I mean, I think it looks cool, I like it. So the more you go over it and get rid of these brush strokes, the more that it's going to just blend together and it'll start looking like a photograph. I'm keeping my X's that I'm painting to be roughly around the same size. They're, I'm making X's and they're about the same. If you need to, to make it easier on yourself, go ahead and turn your canvas. I turn my canvas all the time when I'm painting. It makes things way easier for me. Also, if I'm going too fast, don't worry. You can always pause and stop the video. And I don't want you to be rushing, okay? Take your time. But also, I want to make sure that you finish your painting. So many times have I seen people where they start a piece of art and then they never finish it because they get so stressed out or they just don't sit down long enough to finish it. And I can understand life gets in the way and everything, but calm your monkey mind and relax. This is our fun, happy time to hang out. And if it's really bad, don't worry. You could always paint it again. So there's no stress, no anxiety. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time you paint it. All right, it's coming along. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this painting where it's considered kind of finished, where I paint, I'm not gonna paint the edges, and that's gonna be like on purpose to not paint the edges for an, it's like a kind of unfinished look, sort of, like I meant to do that. And I think it's fun, it's a fun idea. It's, it's just a different way of doing things. Usually I do paint edges, but on this one, I'm just going to let it be what it is. Okay, so 
See, it's kind of fun all the way around. I haven't painted. See that? So it's matching all the way around by not painting on the edges. Okay. So now I'm going to really pay attention, put my thinking cap on here, and I'm going to get close to the dress. I still want to keep my X's going. I'm going to be careful I don't go into the pink or the fleshy tone part of her skin. Whatever you do, try really hard not to get over the skin color because blue is a cool color. It's very dark. And if you get too close into a lighter color like the skin or the pink, what's going to happen is that uh, it's going to, well, you're going to see it. It's going to be like an undertone and it's going to take many, many layers and a lot of tedious effort to cover up the blue to get it back to that really light tone color. And so the best way to avoid all the drama of having to deal with that is just to be very patient and calm and just work on it and go slow. If you need to fix your arm, like maybe it's too big, then go ahead and now's the time to do it. But remember, you still want those brush strokes to look like there's triangle action happening. So like here, I did them all one way. So now I'm gonna come back and do a section or two randomly going the other direction. And I kinda wanna fade that out little bit so that I come up here and while the paint's still wet move some paint around so that way I'm still getting the marks how I need the marks to be not how I don't want the marks to be right I'm liking that that's really good so for me to make it easier for myself I'm gonna go ahead and turn my canvas so I can do the other side that way I'm not stretching and sitting in an awkward pose and I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did. Now it might help if you want to take a minute and let your painting dry before you continue to this area. Because what happens is you could possibly pull some of the pink or the flesh tone out into the blue and they mix a little, which is kind of happening to me right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give that a second to dry. Come back in with some blue. I'm going to let that dry and I'll come back to it and put a second coat on it and it'll be good as new. But if I keep messing with it now while it's wet, all I'm doing is moving more paint around and it's not sticking to the canvas. Remember to keep those X's going. Sometimes I feel like I, it's easy if I bounce around a little bit from one side to the other because sometimes like right now I have a lot of paint here and if I wanted to do a little bit of area, just a little bit of paint, well there's too much paint so I can't. So I'm going to come up here and kind of get rid of some of that paint by covering up a white area. And now that I have less paint on my brush, then I can come over to this little detail-y areas that I want to and I'll feel more secure that I'm not going to mess it up because I have less paint on my brush. So I can control what's going on a little bit better. Make sure you get the shoulders, the edges. Now, I'm leaving a tad bit of space here for her hair. You don't have to because we're going to do black. So if you want to, you can paint all over that. But I'm just, I'm leaving it for me so I can remember where the hair goes. Cover up some of this skin area that I had a boo-boo on. Okay, so before we're done here, I want you to go ahead and check all your spaces and make sure you like your edges of what you got. And I think I'm pretty happy with what I have. I'm liking it. Notice how in my background there are some spaces where there are still some white showing through. I left them on purpose. Do you see that? So I have some little dark blue areas and some lighter blue areas. And you can see some of the brush strokes in there. That's all on purpose. 
So try to make it look messy on purpose. It'll look really cool and super impressionist. Eh, excuse me, it'll make it look really cool and super impressionistic. So go ahead and clean your brush. Remember to wipe it. Go in the dirty water first. And then a dip into the clean water. I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm gonna pull. Oops, do you see that? Do you see I still have some blue there? I'm gonna do another time in the water. Another time just to make sure that I get more of that paint off. All right, I still see a little bit more blue, so I'm gonna do it again. Now, if it doesn't work this third time, I've already cleaned the brush pretty good, so I can put it off to the side, and when I'm done painting, I will go again and clean this again better in the sink with some running water. Make sure that you don't dump a whole lot of paint water down your sink because you can destroy the plumbing over, I mean, the course of years. It doesn't happen right away, but if you're painting all the time, maybe it would be better to throw this, this paint water out on the weeds outside. That might be a better spot than going down your drain. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a brief moment and I'm gonna put this all to the side and I'm gonna use my handy dandy hair dryer to dry everything. We're not done with the painting. The only thing we're doing is we're drying the base coat so we can continue painting. Otherwise, if we keep adding paint right now, all we're gonna be doing is moving around paint on the canvas. So get your handy dandy hair dryer out and dry the painting with me.
that your painting is dry when it's no longer shiny. I can see some shiny spots, but for the most part, I think that it's pretty dry. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working. I recommend that if yours is still wet, keep letting it dry. This might be a good time to take a break if you need one. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work on the skin just a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of a darker skin color. Now, I'm the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to show shadows and highlights and dimension in the skin. I'm going to use my small Filbert Bright that I was talking about earlier. Use the smallest brush you have for this. Now, I'm going to add some really dark skin and I'm going to add it onto the sides the sides of the arms. Now I know it's going to look weird at first, okay? We're going to do this thing that's called contouring and it's very similar to like when you put on makeup and you're putting shadows and highlights to to make features happen in the skin. That way like if you want a smaller nose, you'd put some shadows on the side. If you want your nose to be like more pointier, you'd put a highlight in the middle. And it might make your nose look a little bit smaller and pointier. And so we're basically kind of doing makeup concepts here. So I'm putting these on the side. Now before you go doing this, watch what I'm doing so that way you can see how I'm doing it. Because I'm, I'm going to be working really fast here. And there's a science. So I put some, some uh, brown. I'm going to put... A little bit more brown on the other side of the arm just a little bit on both sides and notice how I'm working as fast as I can here okay really quickly and I'm only putting on a little bit not a lot okay do not put a lot of paint okay so now while it's still wet I'm gonna come in with some dark and I'm gonna add the light tone to it and I'm gonna mix them together I'm going to do two parts light skin to one part dark skin. Now the science of what I'm doing, if you were doing um, the dark skinned person, it's still the same concept. You would just not use super light or super dark. Like you would just vary your two different flesh tones that you're using. That's the only difference. So I'm going to put these kind of this one in the middle here. And now I'm going to blend on the canvas where I want these colors to start working together and blending themselves together between the really dark and the really light. And I'm going to work back and forth. And if I feel that I've taken too long to get there, I'm going to go back in with some other dark color. See how that's like fading. We want them to blend together. We want the dark to blend really well and easily with the light tone. So that way it's like we have many different shades and variances in there. And this is going to help the skin be more 3D. If you never push yourself as a painter, you're never going to grow. Okay, so I want you to try to push yourself a little bit and to really try something new i know this sounds weird and it's awkward but trust me in the end of the day the more you work with this the better it's going to get i'm going with the lighter tones so the whole point here is that i want the lightest tones in the middle and i want the dark ones on the outside so i'm adding just flesh tone in the middle and i'm almost doing it like shadowing like if i had a cylinder and how the light is bouncing off of a cylinder Okay, so I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to go in with some really light tone and that's going to be the light tone is straight in the middle. So the dark parts are going to be pretty much the edges of the body or the dark parts. So 
So I know she's really dark right now, but I'm going to light, lighten her up. It's going to go back and forth, and you're going to need to take some time and work on it. The more you work on it, the better it's going to get for the shading. It just takes a minute. Now, if this is too difficult and you're having a really hard time with it, let it completely dry all the way and then just go back and pick one skin tone and just let it be one skin tone and don't do the shadows. However, always in life and, and there's always going to be, I'm going to take a moment here and wash my brush out just really quickly. In life, when we see with our eyes, our skins have many different tones and colors in them. So we need to work to, we need to think about that, okay? There's always shadows. The more shadows that you put in a painting, the more 3D your painting is going to start looking. It'll look better and it'll look more like a photograph. And we're not trying to go with, for a photograph here, but I still want her to look like a girl. So all this really dark area, I'm applying some lighter tone there and... Notice how they're blending nicely because that darker tone is still kind of wet underneath and it's poking through the lighter tone at the top. Okay, so, so far so good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with some straight white and I'm gonna add it right here on her back, just in the middle. Now, the flesh tone underneath is still wet because I worked really quickly, so it's going to lighten it up. It's not going to be super contrasting white. The faster you work the, with the, this, the better the results are going to be. So we want to be doing this while the paint is wet. And we got to go quick because, the remember, we're working with acrylics here and they dry quickly. So I'm going to do the same thing. We're right in the middle of the arm. I'm going to add some white. And I'm going to allow it to blend right in the middle. I'm going to get some of that shoulder. It's going to blend nicely. Now I'm going to do the other arm. Don't worry if it's looking like a monster right now. It takes a moment. Okay, so... Now I, I wiped off some of the excess paint on, on my brush. I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to blend. So just with a clean brush, no paint on it, and I'm blending those colors together. Do not add water to your paint. We want the paint to last a while, but still, don't add water. Because you're going to dilute the paint and it's just going to be a watery mess to push everything over. We want to have this happy medium where the paint is kind of tacky. And when you get to the point where you feel that it's tacky on the brush and on the canvas, that's where it's the sweet spot, that it's dry, but it's still kind of workable and pliable. And that's what we're looking for, that sweet spot. Now I'm not adding any more dark color. I'm just adding that fleshy tone and some of that dark color is gonna pop through and we're gonna see it and it's gonna look really cool when it pops through. This is called an undertone. Now don't paint blind, don't just slap on paint here. Think about every time you go to apply paint to the canvas, think about what you're doing. Take a moment, stop and think, do I really want to do this? And then do it. Don't just be painting to paint. You want to be mindful painting right now. Be present in the moment. And whenever you feel that you're comfortable and you're happy with what you got, let it be. And this is what we'll have. Always, I usually always like to finish with a little bit of white, a little bit of highlight color. If you're using a dark skin tone, dark skin tones, then use uh, the lightest of the skin tones you have that you're working with. And it just gives it a nice little shine, like the bounce, the light is bouncing off the skin. A little bit of a glow. And if you wanted to emphasize an elbow, you totally could. This would be a good moment right now to, 
take that moment and do an elbow. There we go. I'm liking those so far. I'm going to work on the neck just a little bit. So instead of going into the really dark, I'm just going to go into the middle dark that I made, and that's not going to work. So you know what? Change my mind. I'm going to have to go back into the dark. And just the smallest amount, okay, the smallest amount of dark tone on both sides of the neck. Because remember, we're thinking cylinder, and we want to think, how is it that the light is going to bounce off of the neck? I'm going to blend that in around down the side. Okay, so I'm going to come in with my middle tone and just try to blend. Blending. The more you blend, the cooler it's going to look. And then we want to finish off in the middle with a little white. So we want the really dark edges on the side and we want the light part to be in the middle. And it kind of comes down here to the the triangle part underneath of the of the neck okay so I'm liking that I'm gonna let it be for now let's go ahead and oh let's work on a little bit of hair while we allow the skin to dry take your time if I'm rushing you just uh, pause the video for a second now with my ballerina I want her hair to be black And I'm going to add just the smallest amount of black. Okay, less is more. We don't need a lot here. Don't waste your paint. Black goes a long ways. Okay, so let's get yourself situated and ready before we start on the new, on a new thing. Between the steps, I like to take a moment, look at my painting, check it out. Okay, so I like what I see. Okay, so let's go ahead with the hair. Now, we're doing this in stages, okay? So, I'm going to do just the basic outline of where the head and the hair goes. Now, the head is going to, the hair is here. I'm doing little dots, and I'm thinking, where is the head? And I'm going to make a circle about where the hair would be, and then I'm going to fill in that circle. Remember, less is more with this black paint. Now, I'm kind of just allowing the paint to go on with little strokes. Lots of little strokes, because this is going to make my hair look a little more 3D with lots of tiny little strokes. I'm going to, if you have to, go ahead and turn your canvas so that way you don't have to stretch. But... We're basically doing an oval. Remember with the black, you can't, it's really hard. You practically, you can't go back. So if you don't like it, whoo, so take your time, enjoy the experience and take your time. Okay, remember I still want her face looking off to the right. So we're gonna keep that. Okay, so now I have the gist of where the back of the head is. So now I want to add the bun. I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to figure out where does this bun reside as a circle. I'm going to figure out that circle, and I'm going to work on it. So I'm going to fill it in. Now some of the circle we won't be able to see because there is other, there's other, there's other black paint here. So I have to just think in my imagination where this other circle goes. All right. Okay, so I'm liking it. I do feel though that the head is a little small for the shoulders. So how I can fix that is just make her head a little bit bigger with the black. So I'm going to adjust her head ever so slightly. I'm going to have to fix the bun too. So I'm... 
I'm doing little dots here so that way the edges of my hair kind of look curly because I'm using little tiny dots. I'm thinking about where everything's lining up and where it all goes. Going a little bit at a time. Take your time and breathe. I'm going to have to turn this for a second to make it easier for my hand. I don't like to stress my neck, so I recommend that you don't do the same as well. Okay, so here's a close-up of what I've got so far. Here. See how the hair's kind of looking like there's two circles together. The, the one on the bottom kind of goes up higher than the face a little bit. Okay, now that I'm looking at it, I think my bow could be just a tad bit bigger to be fun and cool. Nice big old bun. Yeah, I think I'm liking it. She's coming. She's happening. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. Take your time and enjoy the process. No need to rush. All right. Okay. So I'm going to let her be with her hair just for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush. Now, before I continue with the hair to make it look more 3D and popped, I really need to allow it to dry a lot. Otherwise, I'm just moving paint around and it's not going to stick to the canvas. And it's going to make a big old mess and I'm just going to get frustrated for no reason. So I'm going to let that be for a minute. While we allow that to dry, let's work on her dress and make it super cool and wow. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with my large square. And... I'm going to go with some white and just, yeah, put some just straight up white. I'm going to do layers. The more layers I have, the cooler and the awesomer this is going to be. I do want to keep this V of her waist going. So the direction of my brush is going to show that. I'm showing that this V is still happening. Okay, so now while the paint is still wet, I'm going to go ahead with some red and put some red in there and you're going to notice it starts turning pink. And what we're doing is we're mixing on the canvas. And I'm not putting a lot of energy or thought into it. I'm just letting the paint gets squished onto the canvas as it gets squished onto the canvas. I'm just letting her happen. Let, let it happen the way it happens and that's how it is. If you need to adjust the arm a little bit, take this opportunity to do that. You need to dress the edges of that dress just ever so slightly over the blue. You can do that as well. And by doing that, what I'm showing is the blue is going to show through the paint, just the red a little bit, and it's going to show that some of the fabric is see-through. We're going to be able to see that see-throughness of the fabric, which could be like tinsel, and it could be really totally cool. I'm going to go back in with some white. And I'm pretty much just, the main goal here is to make as many streaks as you can. The more streaks, the better. All different colors. We want pink, white, and red, and every mixture in between. And it's really just going to make this dress pop. Make sure that they all gather up here at the top so the fabric is like all coming together. Okay, so I'm going to go here with some white, just back and forth, back and forth until you're happy with what you have.
Breathe. Ooh, that's fun. I'm liking it. It's really coming along. Beautiful. You're doing a good job. Well, I think I'm really happy with mine. I'm, I love it. I think she's coming along super beautiful. I'm going to let her be. I'm going to let her be how she is, and I like it. Okay, so continue until you're happy with yours. And if you want to add some other colors, like maybe some purples in there, I would just not recommend doing blue since we did the background blue. Um, in the future, if you paint this again, you could always make her dress blue and then maybe make the background like yellow or something. I mean, there's so many different choices. Now, if you do like the background black, what's going to happen is if she has black hair, they're going to blend in a lot together. So you, I would say stay away from that so you can still have the sharp, pretty edge of the hair. All right. Okay, so... Well, I see that she's still really wet, and I want to continue, but she's super, super wet. So I'm going to take a moment and take a break, and I'm going to uh, use my handy-dandy hair dryer to dry her. I recommend that at this stage you do the same thing. It's okay to use heat if you want to. Just be careful that you don't make the paint melt. If you have cheap quality paint, then it's more likely that if you use a high heat setting on your hair dryer that you will start getting the paint to bubble, which could be a cool look. Um, but for this one, for me, I'm going to steer clear. So I'm going to use the cool setting and I'm going to use it on high.
still see a little bit of shiny, but not a whole lot of shiny, so I'm good. Okay, so there are many different stages from here that we can do. I'm gonna recommend, let's work on the flowers. Okay, so I'm gonna get my green out. You don't need a whole lot of green, just a little bit of green. Don't waste your paint. Oh, oh, geez, too much. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to look at your ballerina and I want you to look at the arms and the waist. Is there an area that you're like, ooh, I didn't do so good on that. Like, which arm do you like better? And whatever arm that you like better, that's going to be the arm we don't paint on. Whatever arm you think you look at and you're like, eh, I could have done better. It's not my, eh, it's not that good. We're going to go ahead and paint the flowers on that side. Okay. So I'm not liking this arm. I'm liking this arm, but I'm not liking this one. I mean, there's different reasons. I mean, I didn't go up here with the blue, but yeah, this is a little big. I mean, you could do both. We could totally do both. I mean, originally when I started painting this, I had the intention of just one side. But what if we just say that she's holding a super big bouquet and we could do both sides and that could be totally cool. But really though, if it's a bouquet, the bouquet would be like long. Uh, I mean, it really depends on, I mean, you could have a bouquet that's going out in both directions. Like she's like a bride walking down the aisle. But I think the more that she's like holding it with one hand, like she just was on stage, she finished her performance. So maybe for me, one side is gonna be better. So it's long. So she's holding the bottom of the bouquet and it's coming out the side. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my small little Filbert Bright. So use your smallest, tiniest brush and we're gonna make the leaf leaves first. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna kind of go out and around to however big this bouquet is going to be. So I want you to take a moment and just kind of do some lines that are green and then fill it in after that. Now notice how I'm doing, here's a close up of what I'm doing, just a whole bunch of little swooshies, okay, little comma swooshes. Little comma swooshes. And they're all originating from this one point. So the bouquet kind of gets all big, but it's all coming from here. We wanted to make it look like it's coming from the front of her. I want to give her a huge bouquet. She got a beautiful, large bouquet. Now you don't have to cover up all of the blue spaces. I'm gonna cover up about 70% of the blue and the pink spaces. Some of the spaces I'm leaving, I'm gonna have flowers there. So there's no need to put paint there if there's gonna be flowers on them. In that slowly but surely it's coming just a really big bouquet super huge bouquet so here's a close-up of what mine looks like a bunch of little dots everywhere little swooshes All right, I'm gonna need to allow that to dry fully before I put on the, the red. Otherwise, they're gonna mix together and it's gonna be a really dark, dingy red and it, it's not gonna look that great. So while we're waiting for that to dry, 
let's go ahead and let's see, let's work on the hair just a, a little bit. Okay, so I know she's very young, but I'm going to use a little gray. And the reason why is because there's lights on her that are shining down. So I want to be able to show contrast in her hair. So to do that, I'm going to add some gray. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to add, get some white, come over here and just add a little small bit of black and mix it around. The more black you add to white, the darker the gray tone is going to be. The more white you add, the lighter the gray tone is going to be. So just the little black goes a long way. So I only need a little, little bit. Just going to mix a nice little gray. Okay, so now I'm going to visualize where her bun is. And this is going to be where the light shines. So in the middle, the middle of where the bun is, the light is shining because it's glistening. I'm flicking the paint. And I'm going to leave the center black. So she also has some, some light that's shining through the side on the side of her head. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that as well. Now, if you've added too much, you don't like it. You can always come back with the black and cover it. There we go. I like it. Okay, so I also want to give her some little tendrils coming down from the face. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm going to take a quick moment here, wash my brush really good, and I didn't shade her face. Now, I'm going to just really quick here do a little bit of a shading, really quick, just to blend it in, her face, to blend in with uh, the other parts of what's going on here. So it's pretty much the same exact concept of what I told you earlier about the blend. I'm doing the exact same thing. There. Okay. So I need that to dry before we do the flowers. Let's see. Hmm. I feel like I made her shoulders a little too large for her head, but I don't know, I guess it works too. There's always that moment in your painting where you're like, what was I thinking? And I feel like I'm there right now, but don't worry, it's still good. It's still, we're not done yet, okay? So keep on hanging in there. I'm going to show you a little secret here. We're going to go in with some blue, and I'm going to go up to the edges with a little bit of blue to the edges of her arm because I had a lot of white there, and I just want to trim that arm, that her body to be a little bit less. Let's cover it up ever so slightly. Just the littlest amount of paint. The less paint you add, the better. And just kind of... And we could do that with the rest of the skin too. Little tiny, I mean the less, like a little pin drop of paint. Just enough to, to go and do what we need to to cover up. I'm going to turn my canvas. If it makes it easier for you, go ahead. And with the littlest amount of paint on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. Had too much, got to wipe it off. I'm just going to work on those edges. There we go. And I like it. There she, there she is. All right. 
Well, it looks like the hair is drying. My hair is drying. I hope yours is too. So, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put some flowers in the hair. And I'm going to put, I'm going to go with my green and I'm going to put a little leaf and the leaf is going to be right here. I'm going to do one more leaf and it's going to be right here. So I got two little leaves. And I guess we could do a third one. Right there. So check it out. Here's a close up of where I put the leaves on the head. See how there's three right next to each other? Okay, I gotta let that dry for a minute. While we're letting that dry. Now, I've noticed something with my painting. Originally, it was just gonna be the ballerina. But now that I see, I have a whole lot of space up here. So i am got lemons and now I'm gonna make lemonade and I think it's gonna be so cool. I am going to put a word up here. Now you can do whatever you want. You could write your name. You could write maybe the name of a ballerina or the name of a theater. Um, I am going to write Motley Muse and it's gonna be like up in lights. So for example, you know how like when you go to the theater and they have the big sign in the front with like the who's going to be the show for the evening? It's going to be like that. So it's going to be my, I'm going to use the name Motley Muse because that's my name. And so I'm going to write it there and it's like, it's like big and she's like Motley Muse. And because at this angle, we don't see the audience. We don't know what is she looking at. And to me, it's as though maybe she might have turned around or something and she could be on stage. And so what we're looking at could be the backdrop and what would be behind her. It also could be that there is a big crowd out there. So like it's just so dark because of the way that the lights are hitting. She can't see out into the audience because she's being lit with the stage lights. So it could be a little bit of everything, right? So use your imagination and write something, you know, I mean, or you could also paint something else. I'm just going to go ahead and write my name. Oops, I lost my little brush. Now I'm going to choose to write my name in black just because I feel that it would really work against that blue. Now if I use the uh, yellow color, it's going to be very dark. And it will be very hard to see. So I want to think, I want, this is how I spell my name. M-O-T-L-E-Y. M-U-U-S-E. Okay. So how I like to do my letters is that I like to start in the middle. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 10 letters. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my letter Y should be the one that's in the middle. So I like to start with the one that's in the middle first. And it's going to be up here. And there's my letter Y. Okay. So now I'm going to do the word muse. I'm going to give it a space and I want my, my words to curve a little bit. Like she's looking up at the sign. Okay. So I got an M and here's what I like to do. Instead of just continuing with muse, I want to write the last letter over here. So that way in the middle, I can space them out and it'll be easier for me to envision it. If you have to, go ahead and turn your paper, your canvas. And now that I have that U, the E, it's so much easier for me to be able to space the, the U and the S. Now, after you write your word, if you need to fix anything, take this moment and fix anything. Okay. 
Make sure that your letters are cool and uniquely you and your style of writing. If this is too difficult for you to do with a brush, you could possibly use a Sharpie marker and it would work very well. Okay, so now I have the word Muse. I'm going to do the same thing here with Motley. So I have the Y and I have the M. And I want to kind of think to myself, well, my E is here. I would like to have the sign to be relatively the same. Even though there are less letters in the word Muse than Motley, I still want it to be roughly the same. So I've got an M. Okay, so now that I have the first and the last letter, I'm going to pick the letter in the middle to write in the middle. One, two, three, one, two, three. <gasps> I don't have a letter that's in the middle. So now to make it easier, I think, okay, well, the T and the L are both letters that are in the middle. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, where's the middle? I find the middle, and then I'm going to, I'm going to do the T a little bit off to the side, and I'm going to do the L, and then I need to do the middle part of the T. So now that I have those spaced, I have an O and an E. So I can figure out where the middle is. You know what? I, I don't think I like how I did my L. Let me show you how to clean a boo-boo. I'm gonna wipe it up really quickly. Before the paint has a chance to dry, I wiped it up. So now that I wiped it up, I see that some of my blue paint from underneath it has made a little mark, so that's okay. What I'm going to do is go in here with my little brush, add a tiny bit of paint, and just cover that up. And then no one will know. It'll be our little secret. But only a little bit of paint, okay? Just a little bit. little bit of paint. And there, you can't hardly tell. I mean, you still see a mark a little bit, but it's not that bad. I'm going to work on that L and move it a little bit over here. There we go. And now I'm going to do the E. And then I have the O right in the middle between the M and the T. And there you go. The easiest way to space out letters. Now I notice that I don't like my M, so I'm going to take this moment to fix it. Go ahead and fix any letters you need to fix. Yeah, so now it looks like she's looking up and she's seeing her name or the name of the show, or the name of the theater up in big lights, which is totally cool. After the performance, she's looking up and she's seeing, yeah, I made it. I'm here. Okay, so now that I'm in the black, I do want to give her a little bit of a curl, like a little bit of a hair that's kind of come down. I'm going to give her two. Kind of wavy. Maybe a third. There. So she's got a little bit of hair coming off the side. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my brush really good and I wanna give her a pearl earring. I'm gonna make sure that I get all of the black off of my brush. Otherwise, when we dip it into the white, we're gonna get gray. And I want the pearl earring to be white. So I'm gonna dip it into, into the, the paintbrush. Now it's important that you're using the smallest paintbrush you got, okay? We want a really small paintbrush. And we're just going to do one little dab. That's it. Just one dab. Don't re-dab it. Just one dab. And that's, there it is. So here's a close-up of my head. Right there. See, it's all a building. We're building this up. It doesn't happen right away. The painting comes after we put a lot of effort and energy. And then at the end, it looks really cool.
Okay, so before I do the flowers, I need to make sure that all this green is dry and I can still see that on my painting that it's super shiny. So I'm gonna use my handy dandy hair dryer one last time and I'm gonna make sure that the green is as dry as I can possibly get it. I recommend that you do the same thing as well. Okay, so now the finishing touch. Let's add the flowers. Okay, so I've got my brush and it's cleaned out really nicely. Make sure it's super, super clean. We still wanna use our tiny little brush. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get some red. And you know what, for this one, we're gonna turn our brush around all the way and we're gonna dip it into the red. See? Check out what I did with my brush. I'm on the opposite end here. So the end that doesn't have the bristles, we dip that into the red. Now where I have blue, I'm going to make a dot. And that's going to be my rose. Now I'm going to start down here in the corner first with roses, trying to cover up as many little blue spaces as I see. Some of these roses can be big, some can be little but mostly try to keep them down here first. Now, the further we go away from the bouquet, we're not gonna have as many. They're gonna be sparing. They're gonna be a little bit less. So we're gonna have more, we're gonna have more uh, green stuff on the end. So we can have a little bit of roses, but not a whole lot. We want more of the roses to be towards the middle. And do as many as you want. 
Try to cover up as much blue as you can. If you cover up a little bit of green, that's okay, don't worry. Sometimes you might have an area that has too much green in it. And you need to break it up with a rose. All right, I'm liking what I see here. It's working, it's happening. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same on her head. I'm gonna put two roses. I'm gonna put one here. And I'm gonna put another one right here. And you know what, let's give her a three. Why not? We'll do three. All right. Now I noticed that I made these a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and some of these roses, I'm gonna make them just a tad bit bigger. Just cause I want some big ones, some little ones. I felt like in my bouquet, they were all roughly the same size. The more you vary it, the cooler it's gonna really look. For the most part, we want the big roses to be towards the bottom. There we go. Okay, we're gonna need to let that dry all the way and we're gonna come back, we're gonna come back with another color, but we can't until it dries all the way. Ooh, you know what I started noticing actually? I looked at my bouquet and I noticed I'm starting, the way I did my leaves here is almost like I made a line of leaves and I don't like that. So I'm gonna take a quick moment here. You don't have to if you don't want to on yours, but I'm gonna to try to make this more of a rounded edge with those leaves. Remember to do the swooshes. Okay, so I'm gonna need to have to let it dry. So I'm gonna take my hair dryer. that I fixed I'm gonna add some a little bit of roses not a lot just a little also when you add your roses if there's like a space that you're like yeah that one didn't work out that well like there's a spot then you can take this time to go ahead and cover up that green with a rose cover up your boobies with roses you if you don't like the green all right that, that seems about right okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and go into some pink. I need to mix the red with the white. And by mixing them together, that's gonna make a nice pretty pink color. Make sure you mix it really good. I'm gonna go in here and just do a little dot, just a tiny little dot in the center of all of my roses. Oops, that was a big dot. But try to do little dots. If you need to, go ahead and wipe your brush. 
and just pick up only a little bit of paint. That might help you to get into those li little tiny dots. And what this is going to do is going to give very, it's going to make the painting look cool and it's more 3D and it's got more going on and the roses just look that much more awesomer. I recommend making sure that they're all the way dry before you do this. Try to dot, try to dot every single one, but if you miss one or two, that's okay, because that would mean it basically will look like that the rose is not facing this direction, that it's facing away, so we don't see the inside of the pink part. Some of my red down here is really wet still, so I have to be very careful and keep adding extra paint on it since it's wet. I have to go back in with a lot of ink. There we go. If there's any you need to fix, take this time, this moment right now, and go back over it and fix it with the red. And I'm really loving mine. I think this painting was super fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you would like to share, I would love to see how your painting turned out. So please send me like a message on social media. I got all of the different, um, I'm on all the different networks. So just find me, Motley Muse, and send me a message because I want to see how cool and awesome your painting turned out. Also, check for more. I've got some other ba fun ballerina paintings on the website, so check them out. And I will see you on the next time. Thanks for watching. Push the purple flower to subscribe and you can watch all kinds of awesome videos. This YouTube channel is all about the Motley Muse art. I create art and I teach you how to create your own. Please subscribe.